scripture readings from uh, Psalm 84, verses 1 through 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Well, good evening. There are some that are visiting with us. We are so thankful that you are here. Some that have been away for a while. And uh, it's good to see you all back out with us as well. This past week, I was looking at some of these pictures, and these are from the James Webb Telescope, and I don't know about you, I just think they're amazing to look at them. It's amazing to me when various people look at these, they have a different perspective. I look at these, and I think how awesome our God is. Others will look at this and continue to add time to the theory that they come up with. How grand and amazing and awesome his creation is to the point when I look at these pictures that are above you and they don't give justice to what they would actually look at look like I'm sure I don't even understand what they mean I can read about them I can look at them but it's amazing to actually think that these places are a part of the universal picture that our God has made and his great creation for all of us in 2023 to be able to see from a telescope. And I believe it's because of evidence to show us how awesome he truly is, how eternal he is. And I can't help but think about various psalms when I think about his handiwork, his creation. Psalm 9, as an example, what is man that you even think of him? You look at these pictures, and we're not even a speck on a speck on a speck. In one of these pictures. But you think about that creation and the greatness of our God. And I want to take you on a, a little journey this evening when it comes to our worship. And this is something that all of us, myself included, need to be reminded of. And hopefully it helps us as we continue going through the rest of this year. And if the Lord wills, as, as long as he gives us that we understand his greatness, how truly awesome he is. In Psalm 19, a psalm that also talks about his creation begins by saying this. This is a psalm of David. He says, The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours forth speech. And night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. He'll go on. We'll stop there for just a minute. But he goes on and he'll talk about, but you can hear them shouting. When you see his creation, it is shouting that there is a designer. You see it in all that we do, in all that we notice. This past week, they found a new kind of a dolphin. How do they not find all the dolphins yet? Man thinks that we know so much. And the more that they find, or the more that we think we find, the, little, the more we understand the little that we know. It is amazing to think about his creation. But here's the issue. I can go out and I can look at the stars and I can go look at the mountains or the beach or whatever you would like to view as his creation. I think it's beautiful out there, quite frankly. But you go out and you see his creation and I can worship that God. I can think about that God and how awesome he is. But I want you to notice what Psalm 19 goes on and talks about. That's just as awesome as his creation. It's a psalm that we sing from time to time, picking up in verse 7. He says, the Lord... The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey at the drippings of the honeycomb. 
And we'll stop there. It is fascinating to me to see God's word and try to figure out if I can have the same perspective of his word as I do when I see his awesome creation. Do I really view it to be more desirable than gold? I've talked about this before. I've talked about honey, and then I have people come up and say, I don't like honey. You all like gold. We like gold. And if you don't, you like something valuable. You're just trying to cause trouble. We understand the value of things. And he says, it is far more desirable than any of those things. And this isn't just poetic license that David is taking in a song. This is literally how David viewed God. His creation is awesome. And his law, his words are awesome. They're sweeter than anything that this world has to offer. And they are more valuable than anything that I can pick up in my hands. So what kind of worship does God deserve? What kind of worship does that God deserve? The last verse in this psalm says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What kind of worship does he deserve from me? And we'll all say the right answer, I'm sure. He's awesome. He deserves my whole heart. My whole soul, my whole soul, my whole being, all that I have to offer, he deserves it because he's awesome. So I want you to think about today. What kind of worship have you given this awesome God that we serve? What kind of worship, and I'm not talking about anybody else, just you. Have you offered this great one today? If you'd open your Bibles to Psalm 84, this is the psalm that was just read to us. This is one of those psalms that for me I go back and meditate on fairly often. And it's because this is the attitude that I want to have. I strive to have when it comes to my worship of my God. This is one of those psalms that they would have sung as they were traveling. It actually will talk a little bit about that. But it's a beautiful psalm. That describes what it means to be in front of that God that we're talking about. In the verses that were just read to us, he talks about coming hungry to worship. He says, how lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God, the bird of also has found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her egg even your altars O lord of hosts my king and my god how blessed are those who dwell in your house they are ever praising you the truth of understanding that only god can satisfy that kind of hunger i long for you i yearn for your courts I am jealous of the, of the birds that are able to have nests there. They live there. Does that describe our perspective of worshiping him? A desire to want to come back and to worship him every single time we have the opportunity? Is that our goal? Is that our desire? He goes on in verse 5 and he says how blessed is the man whose strength is in you and whose heart are the highways to Zion passing through the valley of Baca they make it a spring the early rain also covers it with blessings they go from strength to strength every one of them appears before God in Zion O Lord God of hosts hear my prayer give ear O God of Jacob he tells you we need to come prepared. You need to come that you're going to be satisfied in your worship of our, of our Lord and our God. And you need to come prepared. We've talked about this so often. I am so afraid that people don't ever think about God being in their presence until they sit down in here. And we begin to sing a song. Or we partake of the Lord's Supper. Or now that I just said it. 
And the reality is I am prepared to come and to worship him before I ever step foot in the building here. I love verse 5 when he says, In whose heart are the highways to Zion. He's my strength. This isn't something that I only pick up on Sundays. It's sort of like what Tyler was talking about this morning. We can come to worship service and we can have prayers. But when we go home, those prayers need to continue. This is my private, in essence, worship that comes out publicly when I'm here. I am always showing reverence to him. It's my life. I long to worship him. I long to be with others who do the same. Whose heart are the highways of Zion. Even when I'm passing through the valley of Baca, this is an area that was, maybe your Bible will say weeping at the bottom, or translated. This is another way there was a uh, wilderness that they would go through that was um, just like a desert. And this is the same point that he's making here. It's David saying, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's the same thing. I'm going to walk through the valleys. I'm going to go through these difficulties. But what's going to happen? I'm going to go with my God in all that I do. Do we become or do we come to our worship of God prepared? You continue on in verse 9. Behold our shield, our God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand outside. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts in you. Do we come excited? Are we excited to be here? Verse 10, again, if you underline verses, is one of those, at least for me, gets me. What he says there, he says, For a day in the courts is better than a thousand outside. We can understand that. But then he says, I would rather stand in the doorway of your house, God, than have fellowship or to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Is that true? Is that true? It's beautiful. It's beautiful to read it. But is that true? Would I rather stand at the threshold or the doorway of the house of my God than dwell in the tent of wickedness? For many people, you're going to have to define what wickedness is, probably. But what's the point? The point is that God is greater than anything else that this world has to offer or anything else that we could possibly do. But it's up to you and it's up to me. When we come to worship service, it should be exciting that we're able to come and to worship our God and the excitement that it should give us. You know, I I keep thinking about whatever three years ago, whatever it was now, two years ago when we came back. I just keep thinking about that. Because there's still people that haven't come back for whatever reasons. There was nothing like coming into the building again and singing with you. Did it only take two years for that to run out, though? That feeling? Is that how weak we are? Or is our faith so strong in our God And understanding how awesome it is to be able to come in through those doors every time they're open, if we're able. And to worship his high and holy name. The one that we look at these beautiful, beautiful pictures in the beginning of that he created. What does he deserve? Sometimes I'm afraid to actually answer that question. It's amazing. When you think about different verses, Matthew 5, and it should probably say verse 6 up there. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. God will satisfy you. Or does this sound more like us? Malachi, the first chapter in verse 13, you also say, my, how tiresome it is, and you disdainfully sniff at it, says the Lord of hosts, and you bring what was taken by robbery and what was lame or sick, so you bring the offering. Should I receive that from your hand, says the Lord? that sound like us? 
Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Which one sounds like you? Which one sounds like me? We all have to answer that question. See, the scary thing about the one on Malachi is that we'll look at that and say, well, those sacrifices, they were offering the animals. They were not offering the right sacrifice. Are you? Am I? We understand and can read what the scriptures say on these things. The point is applying them. Is my sacrifice the, that I offer to him this morning and now, is it the best that I have to offer to the God of all? I pray that it is. This is the God that we need to be serving. Why is this so important? First of all, because he deserves it. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. There is no question that he deserves to be praised to the best that we have to offer. And I'm afraid so often we're willing to give him fourth best. And if it's football season, fifth best. People pick and choose. And that's the sad reality. We can, again, we can justify and rationalize a lot of things. People do. I do. But when it comes to our God, what does he deserve? You'd open to Ephesians, the first chapter. We're going to begin there in just a minute. But I really want you to think about how you worship him. You know, I've been, you come up to the building obviously a few months ago when they tore down all those houses or they tore down all the uh, Charlie Lawson's uh, property and everything and they just took out all those trees and now you can see just everywhere until they build whatever they're going to be building. It just dawned on me, it just amazes me how often you're reminded of how quickly time goes by. I can remember driving and going to the old building when you guys met there. Some of you certainly remember that and remember before. You certainly remember coming to this building and the Lawsons were next door. You know what's going to happen if the Lord wills and God's people continue to allow his word to flourish in this area? We'll all be gone and those doors will still open and people will worship God. That's what this is about. The next generation. I love from a personal standpoint, I haven't talked much about this. I love that my son is going to go and preach. But as a dad, I kind of would like him to be here. But there's nothing better for him to go and to preach God's word. Personally, because there will be more tailors preaching. That's just awesome. That's my opinion. But it's God's word that's going to be taught. And that's what this has always been about. So when we come through those doors... That's what this should always be on our minds. What kind of worship am I going to give God? My brothers and sisters, I'm not sure that that crosses people's minds. I think that there's people that are more concerned about what virus they may catch here. I don't change it. I know there are. Instead of worshiping God. There are people that actually are concerned of whether or not the Bengals are going to win or lose. And I'm not going to say it because I got in trouble last year for saying what happened. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter that they lost or won. Because none of that compares to our God. None of it. Ephesians, the first chapter, one of the most amazing things, and you see this with Jonathan's teachings on uh, 1 Peter, where it always talks about glorifying our God to the praise of his glory. Ephesians here, he does the same thing. I'm not going to read all of these verses. I encourage you to do so. We'll start in verse 3, though, for context. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ, 
just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us as adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intentions of his will, and to the pr praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us and his beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. In all wisdom and insight he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him with a view to the administration suitable to the fullness of times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we, are, that we who are the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of salvation, having believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with the view of the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. And I'll stop there. He's going to go on and talk about how, the, hoping that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that we're going to see it. And I pray that we see it. All that God has done for us, all that he does, and we just read some of them here, these amazing spiritual blessings that he offers us, just some of them. What is he worthy of? All praise and glory. All praise and glory that I can muster as his child. He deserves the best that I have that you have to offer. So I ask you again, what kind of worship does he deserve from you? I know it's Sunday night. I know that a lot of us will say, well, I was here twice. That's something. And if this was a checklist, bless your hearts, I'd give you a star. But it's not. We're here to worship the almighty God. Sunday morning, Sunday night. We are here to worship the Almighty God. That should be always the thought in our minds. It's not about the preacher. It's not about the song leader. It's about the God. All of those, we, have important parts to play, for sure. And there's an importance of us understanding who we're here to worship as we're preparing for those things. I don't need to hear the personal stories at the Lord's Supper table when it's about Jesus or my favorite song that I want to sing. This is about praising God. Always about praising Him. We need to understand the God that we serve. There's a lot of things in this world that are going to distract a lot of people. There's a lot of things that have distracted a lot of people. Politics over the next year are going to distract a lot of people. And I'm going to tell you with all my heart what I believe in that. God is in control. Stop worrying. So we solve that issue for the next year. We have an opportunity to let God's light shine through so many different ways. And it needs to be seen when we're here worshiping for sure. But when we are out being the lights that we have been called to be, he deserves it. In all that we do, what does that mean? We all need to continue to grow. It doesn't stop. That's the great thing about being a part of the congregation here at West Mason. I love being a part of this group. Because the whole goal is for you to cause me to continue to grow and me to do the same to you. That we can worship our God not only forever as long as we're able to be here, but for eternity. Worshiping Him. That's what this is all about. If you are not a part of His family, you really don't understand what He has done for you. 
One of the most amazing passages in the scriptures is where it'll talk about in a few different places that people in this world that don't even in essence believe in him or that wicked still get to have some of the blessings that he offers. They see his creation. They get the rain. They get the sun. But there's coming a day where the choice that we've made will determine whether or not we're with him for eternity or have no part with him for eternity. That's the choice. His grace and mercy has given us that opportunity. We need to worship him the way that he deserves to be worshipped. I praise him every day that he doesn't treat me for what I deserve to be treated. But that he has mercy and that he has grace. And loves you and me so much. That he was willing to send his son to die for you, to die for me. Just to give us the opportunity. Do not let that go. Make sure, as Tyler was talking about this morning. Make sure that you're praying. Make sure you're communicating with him. Make sure you're looking around to see who's not been here. Reach out to them. Encourage them. If you have questions, please, please ask them. If there's anything that we can do for you right now, I ask you to please come as we stand and sing.